Anime, Reborn as a Vending Machine, I now wander the dungeon. Continuing to episode 4, Boxo is currently being transported by a horse-drawn carriage with a group of unknown people. He has been on the carriage for 8 hours. Back in the village, these people claim to be emissaries of Director Bear. They said they were taking Boxo to a place to provide food. Among them, Boxo realizes there is the hunter who once tried to steal from him. At first, Boxo gave him the benefit of the doubt, thinking he might have repented and wanted to do honest work. Boxo didn't worry too much since they claimed to be sent by Director Bear. However, after 8 hours, Boxo finally realizes that he is being kidnapped. As a precaution, Boxo checks his points. He currently has 11,346 points and can use protective magic for only 3 hours. It's already late afternoon, and the thieves decide to take a rest. To be cautious, Boxo records their faces with a security camera. The hunter who once wanted to steal from Boxo starts bragging in front of him and threatens Boxo to provide food and drinks. However, Boxo refuses, and the hunter attacks him with a knife, causing one point of damage to Boxo. The boss of the thieves orders the hunter not to hurt Boxo further. Although their target is the coins inside Boxo, the boss believes Boxo himself has a high value. However, the boss becomes slightly annoyed after being mocked by Boxo. The boss heard from the hunter that Boxo can heal himself. The hunter witnessed it during a previous mission. So, the boss orders the others to punish Boxo, but not too severely. Boxo's damage is not too severe, but he can't remain passive either. Fortunately, the system notifies Boxo that he can use 1000 points to increase his defense by 10. Boxo agrees to do it. When the thieves attack Boxo again, their weapons bounce off, and Boxo takes no damage. Then, the boss orders them to stop the punishment. However, he panics when Boxo doesn't heal himself as the hunter claimed. Suddenly, Boxo provides drinks for everyone. The thieves think Boxo has become obedient after being punished, so they drink the beverages without hesitation. As it turns out, the drink provided by Boxo is carbonated and tastes awful. During his lifetime, this drink was one of the 10 worst drinks in the vending machine. The thieves finally reach their destination at night. They arrive at a base in the middle of the forest. The boss instructs the others to bring Boxo to someone they have held captive. When the thieves bring Boxo into the same room as the captive, the captive becomes angry at the thieves' disrespectful behavior. Strangely, the thieves are afraid and immediately leave after handing over the documentation about Boxo. It turns out that the captive is a woman. After reading the documentation, she asks if Boxo truly has self-awareness. Boxo is unsure whether to answer honestly or not. The captive apologizes for not introducing herself earlier. Her name is Hulumi, a renowned magical device mechanic. Boxo feels like he has heard the name before. It seems the thieves are holding Hulumi hostage to study Boxo. Upon recollection, Hulumi is the person Lamis wanted to meet. Learning this, Boxo decides to say welcome. According to the documentation, the word means yes. Hulumi is amazed because this is the first time she has encountered a magical device that understands human language. Hulumi reveals that she once experimented with giving artificial intelligence to magical devices. From the experiment, she concluded that it is impossible to achieve with current technology. Excitedly, Hulumi becomes thirsty. Boxo takes this opportunity to demonstrate his ability. To Hulumi's surprise, the drink that comes out of Boxo tastes delicious and warm. After that, Hulumi started asking various questions to Boxo. Based on his answers, Hulumi learned that Boxo is a magical device with a human soul inside. Currently, Boxo doesn't have an owner. He still retains memories from when he was human. One question that Boxo couldn't answer is why he needs coins. Some are indeed used to replenish products, but he also adds other functions. Boxo feels it's better to demonstrate it directly. He transforms into a different form that sells different products. Hulumi is even more amazed now. She becomes curious if there are other things Boxo can do. Then, Boxo uses his protective magic and shows that he can control who can enter and who cannot. Not only does Boxo have many functions, but he can also use blessings. Boxo is far more extraordinary than any ordinary magical device Hulumi has encountered. Surprisingly, it is Boxo who is impressed by Hulumi's skills. She can understand many things about Boxo on her own. It's already midnight, and Hulumi is now sound asleep. However, Boxo is still worried if the people in the village are aware that he has disappeared. Suddenly, the thieves come into the room to punish the sleeping Hulumi. Boxo has no other choice but to stop them. 
he transforms himself into a vending machine selling adult magazines. The thieves are immediately captivated by it, especially since Boxo offers them the magazines for free. One by one, they leave the room with various excuses to go to their own chambers. As the dawn rises, the thieves bring food for Hulami. However, the food they provide is inedible bread. Hulami hasn't eaten anything yet, fearing they might have tampered with her food. This is where Boxo shines once again. He changes his products into red bean buns. Unlike the bread given by the thieves, the red bean buns are much tastier and softer. Not stopping there, Boxo also provides instant noodles, odin, burgers, and various other dishes. Finally, Hulumi can feel satisfied after so long. After that, the boss of the thieves comes to the room and asks about Hulumi's progress in studying Boxo. He gives Hulumi another two days to study Boxo and extract all his money. So, Hulumi has no choice but to continue her research. Boxo notices that Hulumi's hair is messy due to her constant focus on her work. Unfortunately, there is no shower here. Therefore, Boxo comes up with an idea and provides warm water and a bottle of shampoo. With a limited basin and towel, at least now Hulumi can clean herself up. Currently, their time limit is only until tomorrow morning. Boxo thinks of attracting the thieves' attention so that Hulumi can escape. However, somehow Hulumi already has a hunch that Boxo wants to sacrifice himself. Hulumi strongly disagrees with the plan, especially since there are many monsters on this level. Hulumi herself wouldn't be able to survive without combat abilities. Their last option is to endure and wait for an opportunity to escape together. Hulumi appears resigned and says that she is not afraid to die. After that, she decides to go to sleep since it's already nighttime. While the night is calm, suddenly there's a loud explosion sound near the thieves' hideout. Boxo immediately senses that they are under attack. He needs to wake Hulumi up right away. After waking up, Hulumi quickly understands the situation. This could be their chance to escape. Among the sounds of the attack outside, Boxo hears Lamiz's voice searching for him. Hulumi also recognizes that it's Lamiz's voice. Hulumi asks if Boxo knows Lamiz, and Boxo confirms it. Hulumi becomes relieved knowing that the attackers are Boxo's comrades. She decides to wait inside the room so as not to hinder them. The problem is, the room they occupy could collapse at any moment. Boxo can protect Hulumi with his protective magic. However, the room above them is the thieves' storage for stolen gold, as well as explosive materials. As expected, one of the explosives detonates, causing the room to collapse faster. Boxo manages to protect Hulumi, but now they are surrounded by rocks and debris. Hulumi suddenly asks if Boxo needs money to continue using his protective magic. When Boxo answers yes, Hulumi shows a bag of gold hidden among the rocks above. Boxo adjusts his protection so that the bag of gold can fit inside. After that, Boxo raises the prices of his products, and Hulumi buys everything with the gold. With that, Boxo is confident he can use his magic for three days. However, what Boxo didn't realize is that this room doesn't have many openings for air to enter. After just a few minutes, Hulumi starts to have a headache due to lack of oxygen. It's only then that Boxo realizes he has a function to become an oxygen-providing vending machine. Oxygen vending machines appeared in Japan around 1965 when air pollution became a serious problem. Then, Boxo hears Lamiz's voice again, becoming more persistent in searching for him. Boxo keeps making noises to make Lamiz notice him. After Lamiz finds Boxo, the other hunters help to get them out. Lamiz keeps crying and apologizing for not keeping an eye on Boxo. Apparently, Cariel is the one who took the mission to attack the bandit hideout. Even though there was no reward for the mission, Cariel still took it. Philmina is certain that Cariel wants Boxo to owe him. Cariel says that their group has a specific goal to achieve, and he will use any means to accomplish it. Boxo is an essential part of realizing that goal. Because Lamiz is too focused on Boxo, she doesn't notice that Hulami is also there. Many things happen, but they are grateful to have come out safely. This is the end of episode 4. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part 5 of this series recap.